In his book, Pinched, Don Peck looks at the social change brought on by the current recession and compares it to past economic downturns. He recently spoke at the Politics and Prose Bookstore in Washington, D.C. This is an hour. Okay, good evening. We will get started. Uh, welcome to Politics and Prose Bookstore. I'm Mike Giratano. Uh, I schedule the events here, and I welcome you uh, this evening on behalf of our owners, Bradley Graham and Lisa Muscatine, our new owners, who we're excited to have on board here, uh, and on behalf of the booksellers. So welcome to Politics and Prose, and thank you for being here, for uh, supporting this bookstore, supporting our event series. Um, if you're new here uh, to the bookstore, outside of August and, and December, we do events every, uh, every night. So um, you can follow us, our events, which include classes and book groups. You can follow us, uh, Facebook, Twitter, our weekly email, or politics-pros.com, our website. And actually, as I, I mentioned those outlets, it's probably a good time to tell you to silence your phones and gadgets uh, as we get started this evening. Tonight, we welcome Don Peck to Politics and Prose to discuss his new book, Pinched, How the Great Recession Has Narrowed Our Futures and What We Can Do About It. Don lives here uh, in Washington, D.C., and it is always uh, a pleasure for us as a bookstore to, to welcome a local author here, uh, especially for a debut. And so we welcome Don. Uh, we also welcome the C-SPAN Book TV audience. Thank them for joining us. So the format tonight, uh, is that Don will speak at this podium for about 20, 25, 30 minutes. Uh, he will present the book, tell us why he wrote it, and then we will open it up the second half of the hour to you for questions. Uh, and what we ask is that you get to our audience microphone here in the center aisle. It is the one microphone we have this evening. I know it can be difficult getting there with a crowd this size, but since we're taping and it will keep the talk uh, audible for those of us here, uh, we'll field questions from that microphone. But we do encourage your questions and your input. After the Q&A, Don will have a, uh, we'll sign books up here at this table. His books are for sale in the front of the store. And so that is how it will go. And, uh, but again, we just, uh, really want to again welcome you and say thank you for being here and uh, for Don Peck. Don is a national award-winning writer and a features editor at The Atlantic where he covers the economy and American society. And actually the September issue of The Atlantic, which is out now and also available here uh, for sale, um, features a cover story by Don, Can the Middle Class Be Saved? It is an essay adapted from this book, from Pinched. And also, just say, I'd like to say a quick thank you to The Atlantic for their help uh, promoting this event, for supporting Don and, and, and his work and, and this particular event. So Pinched is about the enduring impact that the Great Recession will have on American life, how economic, societal, and cultural norms have been deeply impacted and subsequently are being and will continue to be altered, transformed. Work environments, family dynamics, and personal identities have been turned on their heads and likely will stay that way. The scars of the past several years, in other words, will remain in the near and distant future. Meanwhile, the chasm between the wealthy elites and the rest widens, and the concentration of wealth threatens to further hollow out the middle class. Cities and communities suffer from this same rift. Wealthy cities have recovered, while others remain shuttered. Our national identity is once again shifting. With historical context, by comparing this recession with collapses of years past, Don reignites the call for reinvention, renewed civic duty, and public action. So thank you again for joining us, and it is a pleasure to welcome to Politics and Prose to discuss this book, Don Peck. Thank you. 
Thanks, Mike. That was a great introduction. I feel like I should just take questions after that. Um, uh, uh, you know, I live about 10 minutes away from politics and prose, and uh, over the years I've been to countless book talks, but this is my first book and, and my first time uh, on this side of the, uh, the microphone. So uh, it's, a, it's mildly surreal for me, but I will do my best. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how this book came about. Um, so uh, as Mike said, I'm a features editor at The Atlantic, and I spent a lot of my time trying to find big stories for us, cover stories. Um, and, and if you know The Atlantic at all, um, one of the most salient features of it is we write very long stories. And they, they, take, a <laughs> yeah, they, they, they take a long time to report. They're deeply reported. They take a while to incubate. So, so one of the pleasures and challenges of the job is trying to look for pieces that won't appear for six or nine months um, that will feel deeply considered, but also timely and relevant. Um, and I, I cover the economy, and, um, among other things. And so when, the, when we had the, the initial financial crash in 2008, um, you know, it just wasn't even possible to predict what the next nine months would look like. As we all remember, things were incredibly fluid. We couldn't even predict next week. Um, but by the time 2009, spring of 2009, had arrived, after TARP, after the first stimulus, you know, the economy had stopped its free fall. The market was rebounding. I think all of us, certainly, certainly I did, you know, breathed kind of a sigh of relief. Um, but I was trying to think ahead to to stories for the fall and 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 winter, and um, so I was talking quite a lot to labor economists and economic historians and students of other major financial crashes. And um, you know, what I found was that really all of them were sounding the same note. You know, they were saying that we were prematurely breathing a sigh of relief. Um, and they were saying that actually, uh, where things had been fluid, the next six months, nine months, 12 months, 24 months more were likely to be quite predictable. Um, uh, the labor market was likely to recover incredibly slowly. The economy was likely to take years to mend. And then when I started reading histories of other long slumps deeper into American history and talking to sociologists about them, um, it became apparent to me that as societies stew in long periods like this one, they change in, in many, many profound ways. Um, and so I decided, rather than assigning pieces that I wanted to start writing about these phenomena, they, st they struck me as important, and it struck me as important to try to identify them as quickly as possible for people so that we could understand them and so that we could think more intelligently about recovery. Um, well, two years later, uh, after two cover stories and, and, and now a book, um, I, I'm sorry to say that, uh, in my opinion, the next year or two or more are, are still quite predictable, at least if we don't significantly shift our public actions, our public policies. Um, we are not, in my opinion, yet near the end of this period. Um, and, uh, and, and if we stay in such a period of weakness um, for another two or three years or more, I think we'll begin to see many of the social changes that, that, that we can see now. Um, we'll, we'll see them begin to, to become much, much more pronounced. Um, so, so what is pinched? Um, in part, as Mike said, it's a history. Uh, I, I look in some detail at the 1970s, the 1930s, the 1890s, different periods that in some ways recall our own, and I, I just detail how life changed within them um, and, and how we got out of them as well, which I think it holds important lessons for us. In part, it's uh, quite a lot of reporting um, from around the country on different people, different places, different classes, uh, because this recession and the recovery such as it's been has been felt very, very differently in different parts of the country by different people. And I think that holds, um, uh, again, important lessons for us in thinking about how to recover. In part, it's a generational study. Uh, you know, one thing that's clear from past slumps, long slumps, is that up and coming generations change profoundly in periods like this one. I spent a lot of time among the millennial generation um, and, and, and the people behind them talking to them uh, about how they were changing, how, their, how, their, uh, uh, how they felt their life prospects were changing, how their political beliefs were changing, and so on. Um, you know, so, so, so overall, um, it's kind of an attempt to assess how this period uh, very broadly is, is changing the places we live, the work we do, 
our family ties, um, our marriages, um, our politics, um, and for some of us, even even who we are. Um, so 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 that's kind of um, what the book sets out to do. In addition, and importantly, it sets out to try to uh, begin to make some recommendations about how we can recover from this period faster and uh, and 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 stand the U.S.